Hello everyone, so welcome to the f part four of our West webcast series on basics in feline, feline reproduction. So um, to, in the previous episodes, we touched on how to select the, the cats for breeding. We touched on what was going to happen during the breedings, etc. And today we'll mainly focus on what's going to happen during parturition. So without further ado, let's jump to the presentation. Hop, here we are. So parturition in the queen, uh, the whelping process can be a very stressful moment. And I'm always telling people that's true that the difficulties to give birth, what we refer to as dystocias in veterinary language, uh, is not something common in cats. However, when you breed cats, uh, you need to expect the unexpected. So that's why it's good to have a, a very good understanding of what can happen uh, to better approach uh, this stressful moment. And uh, just I just want to start with a definition. Uh, Parturition, whelping, is a mechanical and physiological process consisting in the expulsion of the fetuses and their fetal annexes outside the maternal genital tract at the end of the gestation period. So basically, parturition means that the kittens and their fetal annexes, the placenta, are out. And um, it's important to keep in mind that when it comes to parturition, there are really three different stages to consider. So there is what we call the stage one. And during the stage one, this is when the uterus starts to contract. And typically at this stage, this is when the queen change, changes her behavior. This is when she's gonna seek the presence of her owner, or maybe this is when she's gonna try to hide in a closet, etc. So, but at this stage, you cannot see the uterine contractions. They start, but you cannot see them uh, from an external point of view. So you just see that there is a modification of the behavior of the queen, but there's nothing really that uh, can tell you that, oh, she's pushing, she's having uterine contractions, because uterine contractions are not visible. And then you have the stage two, and this is when you will see the queen pushing. This is stage two corresponds to the expulsion of the of the kittens. You will see the queen pushing. And typically, this, these are not uterine contractions. Remember, you don't see the uterine contractions. These are abdominal contractions, which are induced by a kitten entering the pelvic canal. So when the head of a kitten enters the pelvic canal, it's what we call the Ferguson reflex. You will start seeing those abdominal contractions. And when the kitten is expulsed, it is usually quickly followed by what we call stage three, which corresponds to the expulsion of the placenta. So remember, when it comes to parturition, stage one is when you will see the modification of the behavior uh, the, and you are under the impression that something's going to happen, but you will really see parturition is happening only during stage two and stage three. And when it comes to parturition, to whelping in felines and in any species, in fact, it's often a matter of time. Uh, how long should we wait? Uh, what is normal? What is abnormal? So usually I share with breeders this table, uh, which is very basic, which uh, tells you what is okay, what is not okay. If you look at the first line, this one always makes me laugh because uh, for sure, 24 hours before parturition, you will observe a, temp a drop in, temp in abdominal temperature. This is related to the drop in progesterone secretion, in progesterone in the blood of the animal. And basically, when there's no more progesterone, the uterus starts to contract. But this is kind of tricky to evaluate in queens. And uh, if you take the temperature regularly on a queen that is about to give birth, uh, this is a very good way to induce a lot of stress on her, except if it's a very, very nice queen, but definitely not something very easy to do and to, con to monitor in, in the feline species. However, the other lines are kind of interesting. And I think what is really important to focus on in the length between two kittens, it should be between 20 and 30 minutes. And if uh, the queen is pushing uh, and if there are more than two hours between each kittens there might be something wrong um, 
the total length of the label is supposed to be between four and eight hours in Queens, uh, but it can be up to 24 hours in some, certain cases, especially Queens that give birth for the first time, what we call primiparous Queens. So, but one thing I want you to keep in mind is that this table is here to give you some guidelines, especially when you uh, when it is a f it's the first time you uh, deal with a queen giving birth because there are lots of variabilities. It varies a lot from one queen to the other and from one parturition to the other. So this table is just here to give you guidelines again. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of queens that take more than 30 minutes to expose two, between two kittens. I'm sure you heard about parturition that take more than eight hours to deliver all the kittens. So lots of factors can uh, influence those timings and what really matters is your experience so the more parturitions you will uh, deal with the more experience you will be and the more you will know how to react to any kind of situations and uh, unfortunately that's the only way to learn what's normal and what's not because again it varies a lot from one animal to the other and from one parturition to the other and I think the only real rule you need to follow is that if your guts tell you that something is wrong, don't hesitate and go uh, for an emergency consultation with your veterinarian. Um, remember that it's always uh, two queens out of three will give birth in the middle of the night. So it's always important to one, first know which clinic is on emergency call uh, at the, uh, um, when your queen is supposed to give birth and have their phone number handy because uh, you'll never know what can happen during parturition again difficulties to give birth are not something common in the feline species but when you breed cats again you need to uh, expect the unexpected so always have the the clinic's information on hand because you'll never know and if you think something is wrong if you have any doubts go to see your veterinarian because at the vet clinic we have tools we can use to determine uh, what's the best approach to take in this specific case. Don't wait because the more you wait, if something is indeed going wrong, uh, you might end up losing all the kittens. And a question I often get, uh, I think uh, this is important to mention because a few years ago I got a phone call in the middle of the night, remember, two queens out of three give birth in the middle of the night, and this lady told me that, oh, uh, this uh, puppy, this kitten, sorry, uh, I can see its tail and its uh, rear leg, so it's abs absolutely abnormal, uh, 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 this queen requires a section. But unfortunately, but in fact, uh, there was nothing wrong here. Uh, the position of the kittens during parturition, uh, the, 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 what is considered normal is when you have extended legs. So this posterior presentation, the rear legs and the tail first, is something totally normal during feline parturition. 40% of the kittens will show this uh, posterior presentation while 60% of them will present this anterior presentation, head first and front, front, leg, front legs first. So as you can see, both presentations can be seen during normal parturition. So keep this in mind. If you see p kittens coming out like this, it's absolutely not abnormal. This is totally normal in more than 40% of the cases. And last thing concerns the placenta. So I told you that expulsion of the placenta is what we refer to as, as stage three of parturition. And typically placentas should be expulsed in the 10 minutes following the expulsion of a kitten. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer, 30 minutes, but there are some rules to keep in mind. Uh, for one placenta, equals one kitten and in fact it's the other way around for one kitten equals one placenta and i know sometimes people tell me oh yes but sometimes you have one placenta for two kittens it's true there are some situations where the placentas can merge and uh, during the gestation and you will have one placenta for two kittens but this is really really uncommon and usually you have one placenta for one kitten and it's important to verify that because if one placenta is me this is this is what will what will tell you if there's one placenta missing or not 
uh, one of the questions I often have to answer is, uh, should we let the queen eat the placentas? Uh, so to answer that, uh, they don't need to eat the placenta. People say, oh, it's what they, it's their instinct, etc. True, it's their instinct, and maybe uh, when the queens, when, when in, in the very, very old days, queens needed to eat this placenta because it was a source of nutrients, of energy during parturition, etc. But today, if you feed them with a well-balanced diet that uh, fits to this specific life stage, they don't need to eat the placenta. Very often, when they eat the placenta, they can develop a, a diarrhea, which is never a good thing when you have newborn kittens around. So should they eat it? I don't think it's necessary. And clearly today, if you feed them properly, they don't need to eat the placenta. And if one placenta is missing, uh, that's why I told you at the beginning, you need to count and to verify that for one kitten, you have expulsion of one placenta. Because if one is missing, that can happen sometime. It can stay in the uterus. And uh, at this time, the cervix is open. So bacteria from the vagina and from the environment can get inside the uterus and can in fact lead to an infection of the uterus, something we call postpartum endometritis, so inflammation of the uterus after parturition, which can uh, make the queen sick, which can alter the quality of the milk because those bacteria can migrate to the milk and uh, intoxicate the kittens then. So always check uh, that you got all the placentas out because if one is missing, it's important to see with your vet what can be done to, to get it out uh, as quickly as possible because you don't want one placenta to remain inside the uterus for too long because it can cause serious issues in your queen uh, on the, uh, during the lactation. So I think this is what I wanted to tell you whoops, today concerning parturition the queen here i am again um i f again these are really the most important thing i think every breeder should know when they breed for the first time and especially when they're going to expect their first litter uh, there are much more things to cover when it comes parturition in the queen again if you want to learn more don't hesitate to visit our website I, our blog we have um, webinars blog posts covering this topic and if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me. I'm very easy to find on social medias. And uh, I'm always happy to help. Again, the feline breeding community is a very small one. The more people work together, stick together uh, in a constructive way, obviously, this is how we will make this community move, uh, move forward and this feline breeding world move forward. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon for the next episode, which will focus on what you need to know regard concerning the newborn kittens thank you and bye bye